No, it's not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think he's joking. Hope I'm joking. joking. Record this video <laughs> to the cloud. Do not press the wrong button. Yeah. You've all seen me do that before. Hold on. Okay. Okay. I'm. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared of that button. I'm not pressing that. I need one. to get my glasses. Right, um, uh, Elizabeth. I'm going to mute you for now. Okay, dokes. So, my lovely friends, we have a really, really special session today. Adiva, thank you so much for letting me know that you're not able to turn your camera on. Georgina Green, we want to see your face. We have a very special session today. Sam Moine is a former teacher who now teaches coaching for teachers and tutors. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not for myself, but that's basically it's almost, it. Yeah. It's almost like I'm paying attention. Um, <laughs> and uh, Daisy brought the lovely Sam over. Oh. And we had uh, not mince pies, but the kosher equivalent to mince pies um, just pre-Christmas with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer jumpers on and um, a very, very lovely... Um, chat and sense of connection alignment and i reckon mutual appreciation is that fair to say sam yeah for sure oh good that's a relief so <laughs> with that um little preamble and um friendly feeling this is what we're going to do we're going to hand over to you you're going to lead the session we are going to interject ask questions and be as raucous as possible because that's what makes for a good session so over to you awesome well thank you so much for that amazing intro I really appreciate it, Julia. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. really appreciate everyone giving up their time for the next hour. As Julia mentioned, my name is Sam. I'm the founder of two companies, Student Breakthrough and the Educators Coaching Academy. I'm going to share a bit about myself in a little bit. But again, just want to say massive gratitude for you guys. Thank you so much. And Daisy, it's great to see you on here as well. Okay. Um, so we're going to have lots of fun. We're going to have some, it's going to be a very, very high energy session. And we're going to kick off with some high energy. So we're going to play a little game to get the session started. So what I need everyone to do for me is just to choose a number between one and six. All right, choose a number between one. Energy, Helen, yeah, sorry, you're in the wrong session. <laughs> if you wanna leave now, Helen, this is your chance. Um, choose a number between one and six for me. And you don't have to write it into the chat, but you're gonna comment into the chat your answer. So I'm gonna share my screen in a second. That number is gonna to relate to a question or a statement. All right, we just wanna share that into the chat. Uh, to get some energy going on the session and also just to appreciate some things that are in our life right now. So choose your number, one and six. Let's do this thing. Let me just get back to that screen. Okay, team. Usually I have a big dice to do this, but I haven't got my dice. So if you chose number one, drop in the chat right now. What's one thing you are grateful for on the 31st of January? Uh, two, what's the best thing you've done so far this week? Three, what are you excited about? Hopefully being here. Four, what's one thing you're very proud of? Five, who is that person in your life that you deeply appreciate? And six, share something right now that you're very confident in. All right, what's something that you are really confident in yourself at the moment? Hopefully tutoring. You're going to be confident in coaching after this session a little bit. But I love starting this way because uh, you probably heard the quote, where your attention goes, your energy flows. And it's quite easy, especially in the mornings to, I know for myself, if I don't focus on gratitude or what I'm proud of, which is my journaling at the moment, um, I start my day just a little bit flat. So we want to start the session with high energy. All right, let's read some of these out. What we got? But, but, uh, but, uh, I might have to stop showing the screen actually, team. Hopefully everyone's got their, the one they're going to go for. Let's get back in the chat here. All right, we got... My walking buddy, my friend Vicky, keeping me sane at the moment. <laughs> new beginning, 16-year-old, taking responsibility. Yes, Julia. Uh, being here, first session with a new student. Nice, Daisy. Friend Liz, parenting, confidence in tutoring. That was fun. Love my daughter. Level, no idea what DET, QTTLS, but it sounds very, very cool. Um, great ball, <laughs> supportive, and nuts family. Okay, team, that is what the energy we need. Thank you so much for that. We're going to get into the session right now. So what's on offer for you today? Um, we're going to share a few coaching exercises with you that you can implement straight away with your tutors or your tutees. Some of this stuff that we're going to share might be a rediscovery. It might be something that you've heard before. Um, definitely one of the tools I'm going to share at the end is something you might not have heard because, I mean, I think you'll agree, especially in education, there's a big challenge right now with, with mental health. 
You know, it takes like students two years to get a CAMS appointment. 70% of mental health conditions are started by the age of 18. And with coaching, it's all about the prevention part. Like we're not psychotherapists, you know, we're not medical doctors, but we can deliver some great support early on. Yeah, our CAMS. Yeah, you know. And I worked with Daisy, or I trained Daisy on the program. You'll hear from Daisy's experience later. Um, I'm not going to hard sell anything on here. I'm going to mention a little bit how you could um, carry on working with us at the end. But I, when I met Daisy, she was doing so much great work as a tutor. But it's just taking that next step with your tutees and looking beneath the surface, right? Because it's not about the academics. Obviously, it is. But a lot of the time, as the spoken, the tutors I've spoken to, it's about you know self doubt, confidence, anxiety, this kind of thing. And you guys do this anyway. So we're just giving you some more skills today to be able to support those tutees in a deeper level. All right, give me two thumbs up. Who's excited? Who's looking forward to the session? We need two thumbs. Chris, that's one thumb. <laughs> yeah, 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 there we go, buddy. All right, okay, cool. I had to beg, but it's okay. Oh, we've got the fireworks going off as well. I feel honored. Thank you so much. All right, let's get back in. Okay, so yeah, I've just kind of shared about why we're here. Um, to deepen the impact you guys do and make as tutees and tutors. Um, how we're going to do it, I'm going to share a couple of strategies today. And then what we're going to do, we're going to leave with some action to take. All right. So one thing you might just want to write down as an invitation. I love sharing this with students. Um, I'll write this into the chat, actually, so you've got it. Is this distinction? So many people, especially students, and you can put insert whatever feeling here. Let's put confidence. So I want to really focus on the word action today. So a lot of young people I work with on my yes, coach. Yeah, so there isn't one. That's all right, sure. We could just, uh, yeah, make sure I was muted. So you might want to write this down, invitation, uh, confidence, progress, action. So so many people that I work with, both teachers and students, are waiting for a certain feeling before they act. Okay, this could be motivation. It could be whatever. And they're waiting for this feeling, but... The problem is if you're waiting for confidence, if your tutees are waiting for motivation, they're going to be waiting a, a really long time. So what the distinction is, and I want you to take this away today, is the first step in anything is action progress and then insert that feeling. Because we do get sold sometimes. I know the coaching world that it's thinking, feeling, action and impact. So if I can think a certain way, then I'll feel better and then I can take action, which there is some truth in that. For today's session, we're all about action. And I want you guys to take away as much action steps, many action steps as you can while we're here. Now, to get the most in the session, let's do this real quick. Participate fully. You have all been an amazing audience so far. So thank you so much for giving me your full attention. But yeah, make sure your phone's away. The, the tabs on the top are, are fully closed. Um, link into that. Be fully present in the session as well. Um, and when I say participate fully, as you know, working with students, we want that engagement, okay? So comment in the chat, put your hand up. That's where you're gonna take the most away from the session. Now, I love this one. There's gonna be information at you today, but I want you to listen to the insight. Okay, so the insight is how does that information land for you personally? And on that note, do not be selfish, all right? Share those insights, share those takeaways. That's where we learn and grow from each other, all right? So if you've got something to share, unmute, Comment in the chat. It's going to be interactive. Um, can everyone drop a number one into the chat if we're good with those agreements? Awesome team. Okay, sweet. So you're probably thinking, who am I? What am I doing here? I'm going to share my story. Um, I've been running my business now for six years. We've worked with international schools from China to Portugal to Spain. Um, I've trained people in Cuba, in Argentina, and the business now is going pretty well, but it wasn't always like that for me. And I'm just going to share a little bit about who I am and how I got here. This is Sam at 10 years old. Can everyone give me a virtual R? Okay, I'll imagine it was really loud. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, this is me at 10. Yes, those are Harry Potter glasses. They had HP on the side. Don't know why I wore them, because as a result of that, uh, I did face some challenges as a 10-year-old. Really didn't find my tribe. Um, what I mean by that, I didn't really fit into any groups. I got picked on quite a lot and I felt really anxious. 
Now, I looked up to one person. So on my screen, I've got Juliet, Elizabeth, Daisy and Claire and everyone on the call. Think back to you at 10 years old. And who did you look up to? Now, I looked up to my dad. My dad's an amazing man, inspirational. For one reason for me, mainly, that he was a Royal Marine commando. He fought in the Falklands War. He was a submariner. Got a beard, tattoos, exudes masculinity. And I'm his little, I was his oldest son. I am his oldest son. Like, little church, quiet, quiet church mouse, is that the expression. Very shy. So write this down for me, invitation. This is why you guys are so important for the, the lives of the students you work with. I took on the belief. We're going to look at beliefs today. I'll put it into the chat. You write down the word belief. In the word belief, there's the word lie. And a lot of these beliefs that we have around about ourselves are formed between the ages of zero and eight. So if you're working with students that are a lot younger, this would be really important. But also we take these thoughts and beliefs you know, throughout our childhood. <laughs> nice. The belief... And I took on the belief that I had to join the army to make my dad proud. If I do not join the army, I will not be deemed worthy as a man. That was my belief. Now, I did all this training. And I eventually achieved my dream. And I want you to imagine achieving a dream you've had from childhood. Like, just what would that feel like for you to achieve that dream? Whether you want to be an astronaut... <laughs> Or something cool. On the 2012, I got a letter through the post that changed my life. And I knelt down onto the floor and picked up the letter. It was, it was an amazing moment. And I cut through the, the red wax. It was an official document. And it said, Sam, you've passed the initial test for the army. And you're going to be joining the Royal Anglian Regiment of the British Army. And I run over to my dad at 21. I give him the biggest hug. You know the hug when you feel the person's almost heartbeat. It was that level of connection. And I finally felt that my dad loved me. But team, I'd love for you to think about, well, not love, I'd, I'd invite you to think about a time when things weren't going so well. So can you lock in a memory where you were really upset? Two weeks after this event, I got another letter through the post. And it was the same style of letter. But I wasn't expecting this. And again, I kneeled down on the floor. I cut through the red wax. And I'd had some problems with my health leading up to this army, these army tests. And the first line flipped my whole world 180. The first line said, it started with the word unfortunately, which all fun letters start with. <laughs> unfortunately, you've been diagnosed with Crohn's disease and you can no longer join the armed forces. And it's a bit like a trap door opening up, but I just collapsed onto the floor in my parents' front room. And I brought my knees into my chest and I just cried uncontrollably. And I didn't really know what else to do, but I felt like I let everyone down. So again, going back to your role, this is why coaching is so important for your tutees. Like, yes, ultimately you're there to get the grade, but you can be that inspirational person. You can be the person that picks this student up. And this is why the coaching for me is, is going to transcend what you're doing already as a tutor. So just to round off this story, my dad's a soldier. Guess what my mum was? A primary school teacher. So I went and did what mum did. I became a secondary school history teacher. And I absolutely hated it. Now, I didn't hate the kids, didn't hate the subject, didn't hate the school. Team, I hated myself. And these feelings of anxiety came that from the childhood came back. It got to the point where I couldn't get into school to teach. There was one moment that changed my life. I get quite emotional thinking about this. I hadn't been to school for a few days because I was so anxious. I make it in on about half an hour's sleep. I was also a chronic insomniac. And um, I walk into my classroom to teach my year 11 class. There's a girl at the front. Her name's Susie Clark. 
She looks me dead in the eye and she said, sir, are you okay? And I responded with the classic British, oh, the classic British response of fine. Write this one down for me. Feelings inside, not expressed. Make sure you got a pen, take some notes. Um, I responded with them fine. And the student showed me so much compassion. I turned away from the class with a whiteboard pen, not to write on the board, but because I had tears rolling down my face. And I had this big emotional breakdown in front of this group of kids because this student was able to just ask me how I was doing. Margaret, I know you got your hand up. We'll take questions just after this little bit. And it was the moment to kickstart my journey. It was the moment where I realized my mental health is on the floor. I've got to do something about this. And I found coaching. On the 23rd of April, 2015, I had a coaching session. I had no idea what this was. <laughs> I thought coaching was for rugby, football, cricket. This was a coach for my feelings and my thinking. I learned one thing mainly on that session as a 24 year old man was to express and not suppress. I repeat that express, don't suppress. I talked for the first time. I was living in Milton Keynes and I walked around the park afterwards. And it was like taking sunglasses off on a bright summer's day. Like everything was vibrant for the first time in like two or three years. And I felt alive and I went back into school became a much better teacher. This is why people that go through the coaching program that we run also transcend and level up a lot because they're learning more about themselves. Like they're looking within for the answers, not outside. Anyway, I went back into school. I thought I could do something to help kids, not just with history. And I became a qualified coach. In 2017, I made a lovely little business called Student Breakthrough and my own coaching program. And I started working one-on-one -on -one with students, then in large assemblies, and then training. And I started to realize that coaching is a phenomenal way to help emotional support in schools because it's really easy to access. It's very fast to implement and students enjoy it because of the action that goes alongside with it. And after a while, people were just asking me, can you train me in what you do? Great book by Richard Branson. It's called Say Yes. Someone called me up, Sam, can you train me in your coaching program? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> say yes, say yes, say yes. And I started training people. And the last part of this story was that this is how we create a ripple effect, right? This is how we can actually change the world by training other people in something that works, right? And that is now called the Educators Coaching Academy. And I've been lucky enough to feature on BBC, Northampton Chronicle, the big newspapers, I'm joking. But um, the work has been, has been really well received. And the Educators Coaching Academy now just offers ICF level training to teachers, tutors, youth workers, to develop their skills as a human being but also to skyrocket the growth of, in this case, their duties. And recently I moved to Lisbon in, Lisbon in Portugal. We're doing some work with some really nice international schools out here. Again, bringing this coaching support into schools. I've seen it work time and time again. Daisy's been on the course as well. And it's been great to work with a tutor. And just thank you for listening to my story. Hopefully that gives it a bit of context as to who I am. Take one thing away. As always, failure is a blessing. Failure is a blessing. If I didn't have Crohn's, I would not be here with you today. I'll be doing some army thing. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be in Portugal. Has anyone got any questions so far? I know someone had a hand up. Goodness me, that was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, I told you to be uh, energy today. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Come on, guys, questions, insights. If there's no questions, we got one a door closes, someone. A window opens, everything happens for a reason. Without failure, I wouldn't be a teacher tutor, yes, D. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Angela, you got your hand up. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Um, this isn't this isn't meant 
but it, it's really gutted me this morning and I have to explain why. I have just spent a year of my life doing the equivalent of level five. Now, I know you didn't understand what that was and that's absolutely fine, but level five is equivalent to the second year of an education degree. Level six is a, is a full honours degree. Level seven is an MA, level eight, et cetera, et cetera. I have changed careers as an adult in doing something to do something I love, but I've always had a glass ceiling and many tutors feel that they have glass ceilings. Now, my glass ceiling in my 30 year career as a podiatrist was the fact I didn't have a degree. Mm. My glass ceiling is again, and it's just been proved that I don't have a degree in education because that's not the route I could take. But my degree, because it's for um, adult students, or my qualification, sorry, is because it's for adult students, is actually more relevant. And although I'd love to do a level six to give me that degree that my family have got, there isn't one in this qualification that would actually be pertinent to teaching adults. I feel just now as if I have been hit by that flaming glass ceiling. That's not your fault, Sam. This is something inside me. And I feel that so often as individuals, we feel the sense of not good enough, not valued enough, not respected enough, not for the hours. I've done a level three, four, and five, which is the A level, first year degree, second year degree, in a year, which would normally take three and a half years to do if I was doing it at the Open University. I have worked my guts off. And just that one comment, I don't know what your qualification is, is one that I may be faced by the students. They don't realise the effort I've gone in as an adult to do this. And I, I just needed to, I needed to express that because otherwise I would take it as a, I'll take it on board. And you know, you talk about letting it go, how we often have to let it go. So although this wasn't your, I appreciate you not knowing what this qualification was all about, but the diploma in education training is actually really highly respected. And, um, but it's not, it's it's almost like to add graduates again. You're not a graduate. You're not a graduate. Not forgetting what I can offer and bring to the table, but what I haven't managed to achieve. I, I'm sorry. I just had to share that. I'm really sorry. No, I want to just jump on that. Now, I actually shared that, Angela. Thank you so much for your comment, for your honesty. When I said that qualification, actually, in my mind, I hope you didn't come across this. In my mind, it's like, wow, that sounded very, very, like, high level. <laughs> That's what I meant by that. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I like, realise that it's my it's it's me taking it on board. But it's like somebody cut me, and I'm thinking, you know, you something you'd be proud of. You know, you ask me something I'd be really proud of. You have absolutely drawn blood to get this qualification this year, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, send me to university. I'll get your flaming degree. I'll come back. It'd be totally inappropriate for what I want to teach, but I'll have that bit of paper as a degree as a graduate. Nice, thank you, Angela. Just some questions to reflect on here. So once we have an insight like that, you might just want to reflect, like, what is the lesson here? What is this teaching me? What is this moment of being, um, I don't want to say triggered, but like, what, what's that What's that lesson? And also, how can I use this moving forward? So actually, it's a great little growth mindset thing for students, these 12 words. What can I learn from this? It's actually, what can I learn from this I use? And how can I use this knowledge? Um, but thank you so much for your comment. And we, I'll share something at the end that I think might help as well. Okay, thank you so much, Angela. Do you mind my just sharing as well, if you don't mind, Sam, that um, what a safe space this must be that Angela was able to bring that forward um, yeah, and that Sam was able to hold space for her. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sam. No worries. All right. Thank you, Angela. Let's get back in. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so just some... I'm going to have time. We're good. Um, well, I was thinking here about the beliefs and... I'm using Daisy a lot as an example here because I've I've spoken to lots of tutors. Daisy's gone through the program, but obviously people, a lot of people go into tutoring to give themselves autonomy and freedom, which is great. Um, and they have that ability, as you guys know, right, to kind of work for yourselves. I know you might be working for a tutoring company, but you've got the chance to actually like have ownership over your life, which is the biggest thing. But I'm seeing the work I did with Daisy is, yeah, she's tutoring, she's got autonomy, but actually adding this coaching thing means that she can do even more stuff and help students on a deeper level. And I love the film Up. And I see a lot of teachers in the staff room. If you haven't seen the film Up, this is Mr. Frederickson. Um, you should watch the film Up as a bit of coaching homework. Um, but I see a lot of teachers and, and, and tutors um, in my experience that many teachers in the staff room that 
have been there for a long time. They maybe wanted to leave, but they never did leave. And what I'm seeing with the coaching, because people find out so much about themselves, if you haven't seen the film, Russell is like this super energetic kid and they gain all this like newfound life and they can offer new different things to their, their, their students, their tutees. I think you'll agree with this one. This is me again, head down on the desk, that working in education does not support your mental health. This is my experience. Um, and it might, be, it might be yours as well. If you were a teacher that we get so wrapped up sometimes in working in schools that we barely, rarely look after ourselves. You know, it can be like this tornado spinning you around. And I still feel this today. I'm not some guru expert. Like I still face these, this feeling of overwhelm. But what I've done and learned on my own journey and what I love sharing with other people is creating this sense of calm and learning new things to support your own mental health and your well-being and to help your students on a deeper level is unbelievable. And it gives you that feeling of like taking this tornado into a bit of a rainbow. And I see this one quite a lot. Like I'm just a tutor. I'm just a teacher. I can't become anything else. Sometimes we label ourselves um, and labels can be quite damaging, right? You know, our language creates our reality. That's a nice one. Like our language creates our reality. I am X, I am Y. And it can sometimes make us feel a bit trapped in a little box. You know, I was a teacher. I was, that's what I labeled myself as. You know, when you meet someone in the pub or at a party, what do you do? I'm a teacher. But we do so much more than that. And as a tutor, you do so much more than just tutor. So actually, when we're learning new skills like coaching or whatever it is, it's a bit like releasing ourselves, in this case, the birdcage and flying free and actually offering something different to those young people. And last thing, I think working education and for the people I've worked and, and the tutors I've connected with, a lot of us do underestimate our worth. And at times we can be controlled by fear. It can be like the Dementor from Harry Potter. <laughs> right if you love like, big harry potter fan um and it can make us feel a bit drained a bit scared and i've been there as a teacher as well but again the skills i've learned really helps it's like the patronus in harry potter going across the lake and really energizing ourselves and underestimate that we can actually charge more we can help more people and we have great self-worth now we're going to get out of our comfort zone a little bit today just like the hermit crab running across the beach to find a new shell. Uh, we're going to do an exercise very shortly. Um, and a bit like the crab running across the beach to find a shell, it's about getting out of our comfort zones and doing something different and not thinking this is just it. What else can I do? What else could be possible? I love that question. What else could be possible? All right, team, what would be great? Just to comment in the chat, what do you think coaching is? And you can unmute if you want as well. What is coaching? If I say the word coaching, what, what the hell does that mean? Also, everyone calls themselves a coach at the moment. so <laughs> And it means a lot of things, different, different things to different people. So what does coaching mean to you? Help to move forward, helping someone move from one place to another, motivational speaking. Margaret, can we just get you to mute? That'd be great. Um, Thank you. Uh, asking questions, asking right questions. Nice. Listening guidance, supporting growth, offering tips, inspiring others. Yeah, no, okay, team. Nice. Thank you for sharing. So again, an invitation to write this, to draw this out. Because you might not know what coaching is and the different types of coaching and, and talking therapy. So here's our little talking therapy line. On the left-hand side, we've got therapy. I've got a great therapist at the moment. Um, and with therapy, we go right back to the past. Okay, so looking at real childhood trauma. With a big T, we call it or a little T. We've all got childhood trauma. It depends on what level. But therapy is great. We talk, we share... Nothing really gets done at the end, but it's a great space to talk about past pain from childhood. Now, next to that, we've got counseling. Now, most of school support is focused on counseling, which again is going back to the past pain, but something more specific. So I'm actually a trained grief recovery counselor for students. And obviously in that we're dealing with loss, with grief. It's quite specific, but again, it's past pain. In my experience of counseling, not much action, not much doing. 
Now on the right hand side of this, we have consulting and consulting might actually be tutoring. It might be teaching. You're an expert in your space and you're giving knowledge to someone else, but quite focused on you. Next to consulting, we have mentoring, which again is the role of a tutor. You know, asking great questions, but still offering some guidance. And then we have coaching in the middle. So all of this stuff is linked to asking great questions, listening and silence. But coaching, if you want to write this down, is in the present moment. So it's all about the here and now. It helps our clients to imagine a future, an improved future than what they're currently living in. And it's big on action taking. Okay, so I mentioned that at the start. Like if I'm waiting to feel confident in the subject, I'm waiting to feel needing motivation, you're going to be waiting a long time. It comes down to action. The distance between your dreams and your reality for our students, the distance from where they are, where they want to be is action. So this is why coaching, I believe, is going to transform education. Has everyone seen this Brené Brown clip? If you haven't, I think we'll watch it. Um, this is all about empathy. Now, empathy is putting ourselves in another person's shoes. And when we're coaching someone, it's really important to look again within. You know, happiness comes from the inside out. But a lot of the time we come from the outside in thinking. And when we work with someone, we want to put them ourselves in their shoes. So we're just going to watch this clip. And you might want to take a note with you. Julia, can you just give me a sign if it's working? Yeah. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection, sympathy. Feels connection, sympathy. Hmm, maybe not. Um, I'm worried that it might be my Wi-Fi, so I've just made you host, Sam. Okay. It's worth trying again because Brene Brown's awesome. Yeah, Brene Brown is amazing. Let and me... also, I've never heard this. I really You've heard this? Oh, this is no. awesome. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could explain empathy, but you might as well get the queen of empathy to explain empathy to you. Oh, now we've got some Portuguese ads. <laughs> Portuguese dentures. Portuguese dentures. Come out to Portugal, get this some dentures. This is beautiful. I love what you did there. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. If it doesn't work this time, we'll just... Uh... So what is empathy? Yeah, we're fine. Very different than sympathy. Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's, a, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, you climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is... Oh, it's bad, uh-huh. Uh, no, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least I had a yeah and we do it all the time because you know what someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it 
I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put this little lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. So team, as coaches, we are big on empathy. What did you take away from that little clip? What was an insight from the Brené Brown clip? Just comment in the chat. Georgina, don't try to make it better. Empathy is about connection. Nice, Daisy. What else, team? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question here because um, we started off by speaking about action. Yeah. So as, as many of you know, I have one, um, one of my kids at the moment needs a lot, a lot of help in the functioning of life. And um, when I'm feeling good, I am able to climb that ladder down into the hole. And mm. sometimes that's hard because sometimes you actually lose the ladder, you get stuck there too. And um, sometimes it feels safer to just shout down and throw him a sandwich. <laughs> and then sometimes, um, sometimes you feel that you are supposed to point to strategies. And so, you started off by talking about actions and I'm curious to know when are they strategies and when are they silver lining sandwich, um, unhelpful nonsense. So I haven't really articulated a question there, but that's, no, I think you mean I'm big on, I mean, the accommodation, what I'm trying to share here is that so we're going to, we're going to move into a, a bit about, uh, listening and connection, but obviously to create action, from a coaching perspective, there needs to be an element of empathy and Fast. connection and understanding. Yeah, yeah. I think as tutors, as teachers, I know from my own experience, I see people that are very quick to offer solution. Like my mom is the worst at this. <laughs> I'm like, mom, I've had a problem. Sorry, she, sorry. You know you're live to LinkedIn and YouTube right now, right? Oh, she's fine. She's not on LinkedIn or YouTube. She's okay. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But she went, she, she'll, no, I think I've spoken to her about this because I'll say with a problem and then she will say, this is what happened to me in the 1980s or some other random like event, you know, like she'll give her own life experience. Now, distinction, you want to write this one down. I love this one so much. Do you want, do you want my advice or do you want me? If you can grasp just this one thing of this whole webinar, that'd be amazing. Right? Do you want my advice or do you want me to listen? Do you want my advice or do you want me to listen? If you can nail and even that. Then, and even then, when you give advice, they don't have to take it. That's fine too. Yeah, totally. And I think a lot of, a lot of us will agree that we don't actually want people's advice. <laughs> we just want that space to be heard, listened and understood. And it's the same for the young people that we work with. Um, do you want a solution? Do you want a hug? Yeah, Helen, that's awesome. Love that one. Or cake, or Julia's lovely. What are they called? What are they called again? Um, I think it was strudel biscuits. There was strudel sugar. Biscuit. There was raisins, and Odette was gutted because there weren't any left by the time she got back, which was not entirely your fault, Sam. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I blame um, you. You can blame me, but we're just going <laughs> to get back onto it, team. Um, one great thing that we use in in coaching is this iceberg tool. Now we're not to do this. We don't have the time, but if you start to think what's really going on for this young person, you want to ask this question, you know, what is the story behind the story? What is the story behind the story? Because we're always telling stories as coaches working beneath the surface to think what is really going on. And the issue up here is never the issue. You know, when we see anxiety, when we see anger, when we see fear, whatever it is on the surface level, the top behavior if we can look beneath the surface, then we're dealing with the cause and not the symptom. 
when you're working with someone, you might want to start thinking like, what pain is this person experiencing? Who or what is influencing this person? What action are they taking towards you at school or at home? What's this person trying to achieve? And what does this person feel about you and themselves? If we start to look at our duties in this way, again, the surface level is I want to do great at school. I want to gain this grade. I want to, you know, get this exam result. But there's so much other stuff that goes with it. This is why your role, you can be that inspirational person that can transcend not just their academics, but their mental health, their confidence, their anxiety. And by coming, becoming a heart with ears, bringing full empathy to this person is a great starting point to build connection. As Brandy Brown said, right? Empathy fuels connection, sympathy drives or creates disconnection. How are we doing with time? Okay, we've probably just got enough time to share this. If you want to write this down into your notes, this is our little model that we use in the Educators Coaching Academy. It's called the Breakthrough Basics. Down the bottom here, we've got listening. Top left, we've got questions. And on the right-hand side, we've got silence. And I, as I train Daisy on the program, and Daisy learned loads of different coaching tools and exercises and lots of other stuff. Now, I'm just going to share a little bit about listening here. Now, hopefully, you know who this guy is. If you don't know, this is Nelson Mandela. Now, Nelson Mandela was a phenomenal leader. And in the research I've done about him, he was a great leader for one reason. And that was because he learned the skill of listening. And he actually learned this from his dad. A bit of a history lesson from a history teacher here. Nelson Mandela's dad was a tribal chief in Africa. And he used to take little Nelson Mandela along to the meetings in South Africa. And Nelson Mandela remembered two things from these experiences as a young boy. That all of these tribal leaders were sat in a circle so everyone could see each other. The second thing he learned was that his dad was the last to speak. And in that moment, he realized that actually by listening to everyone share, people can feel heard, understood, and valued. The biggest communication problem we face is that we listen to reply, we don't listen to understand. Now, Angela shared something really personal earlier. As the host, it could have been quite easy to cut her off. Or, or just share something or move the conversation on. But again, this distinction here, becoming a heart with ears. Have I been taking your heart center, the love that you have for yourself and your family, and putting that <laughs> on your ears? That's what we want as coaching, becoming a heart with ears. Most of us have been given the gift of hearing. You know, hearing is a physiological phenomenon. We can all hear, but I hope you can hear me right now. But listening... Right, that's a psychological act. And the more we can listen to understand people and not to reply, the more connected we feel, the more valued they are, and the more respected that person feels in your presence. They feel respected, they feel heard and understood. When you're working with a T and they're sharing something, you want to put your tutor hat off and put your coaching hat on and just give them the space just to share and to feel really heard and understood. And that's called what we use breakthrough listening. You can also drop in a powerful question, some silence. But if we can nail the skill of listening, it can transform lives. Yeah, another great little tip here. When you're listening to someone, it's just checking in with them. I know you're not present right now when you do this, but checking in with what emotion is this person currently feeling? I did this with Angela just earlier when she was sharing. Obviously, I don't want to share that with Angela because I'm assuming, but it's building emotional intelligence. It's building connection with Angela just to think, okay, what emotion is this person going through? Check in with your tutees with that too. I've worked with some coaches who talk far too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's about, it's not about them. It's about the client. Um, okay. Have we got time for this last bit? Yeah, but you just need to know that a heart with ears has just blown us all away. 
it, yeah, yeah, I mean, just we love it. You're you're talking to the right best. Yeah. You're right, Daisy. Daily. Yeah, it's the best. Heart with ears is the best. It's like I think about it daily. <laughs> like it's my favorite saying. Like I want to get it just like plastered in front of me. <laughs> I think because it's such a visual, such an effective visual, that um, it it act, you've actually spoken right to my heart and reminded it what it's supposed to do. It's really nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Julie, I'm thinking I've got another tool to share, but it's it's going to take us up. I'm... Well, then let's book in another session. <laughs> look at D. Look at D. D said so. Sam, nothing to do. Okay. D said so. Okay. Well, maybe we just do some reflection for the last. That would be lovely. Thank little you. Little bit, um, and then we'll hear from Daisy, and then actually let's hear from Daisy now. Daisy, just do you want to share a bit of your you know your experience? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I came to Sam in August of last year. Um, I was tutoring, I've been tutoring for two years, and I was kind of getting to the point where I realized that a lot of the work that I was doing, especially with like, there was a couple of like, girls in particular who were like 16, who really came to me for like, advice. And at points, it felt like I was doing the kind of therapy aspect without having the training to do it. And I got to the point where I thought I want to do this responsibly, I want to do this properly I don't want to just sort of be giving them advice without that training because that was quite it seemed like a pattern for me with students um and I yeah so I spoke to Sam immediately we like connected a lot of the same values um I think a lot of the values that we have in tutoring and especially in QT are shared with ECA which immediately was what got me was that a lot of what I felt about my role in education was kind of mirrored in Sam particular um so I started doing the training and it's been going really well it's really great it's a really nice sense of community uh there's a lot of, sort of other people in the same sort of boat but I'm the only tutor which I find crazy still because <laughs> um, I just think that coaching and tutoring go together so perfectly um in my opinion yeah not anymore <laughs> yeah this is like my kind of value of it um and yeah and I've noticed the place where I've noticed my coaching coming into my tutoring the most has actually been, so the last few months I've been doing a lot of, working a lot with A-level students who are applying for university and the coaching stuff for that has been like, I think has been so helpful. Um, so I had a student who I worked with long-term who has had a lot of health issues, who was out of school a lot of the time, who kind of wasn't very connected with education. Um, and she's recently actually left her A-levels, but she wants to apply for university. So we've been doing like a lot of work around that. And it's been really amazing seeing the effect of giving her that space to talk about things because applying for university about your goals, but it's also very personal usually. Um, is a very personal experience because they have to describe their life experiences. They have to sort of talk about what they want to do and why they want to do it. Um, and the impact that I've seen on this one student in like two sessions of us doing university applications and me using like powerful questioning and giving her space and silence has actually been huge. Um, and I can just tell with her that she's feeling the impact of that as well. So I don't really know where I'm going with this. I'm rambling a little bit. I'm a bit of a rambler. Yeah, that's cool. I just, um, and Daisy, we helped yeah. you with a uh, bit of the business stuff as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do business stuff as well. Like working out how to kind of um, structure the business, how to kind of market these ideas. Um, uh, selling a service is a, is a Sam phrase that I really like um, about sort of how to connect with people who want to want tutoring and want coaching. Um, and yeah, it's just been really, really valuable. Like, it's really changed my idea of what I could do with my career, I think in a big way, like it's expanded it a lot. Um, and yeah. Daisy, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, I, 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 there's no like hard sell here, but I thought at a point of service, it'd be good to just to share a bit about if you were interested in what you could carry on doing with us. I got all this other stuff I was going to share with you, but um Oh, that's not it. We're on this one from current slide. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got some training coming up. Um, this is called our ECA Elite Diploma. Um, there's 30 modules of coach training. It lasts five months. It's super flexible. There's two live calls a month. That's it. Um, a little bit of other learning as well, but it's mostly delivered on those calls. You're looking at four to six hours a month 
of commitment. Um, at the end, you get an ISF accreditation in coaching. So this is, coaching is unregulated, by the way. You can call yourself a coach right now. Um, we go very, very high standard. It took us a year to get this accreditation. Lots of hard work, but you get what's called your ACC, which is an Associate Certified Coach. It means you can work internationally with coaching. Um, we have group calls. You have mentoring. There's coaching overviews. So you submit five recordings and we we give you feedback and feedback and feedback. What I love about this training as well, the course is five months. Daisy's is in our community for the whole year. And we added another module for Daisy called Business Breakthrough. So helping Daisy package her stuff, getting her offer nice and sorted in a supportive place of loads of other teachers and yeah, mainly teachers on this program. That's the ECA. Um, so if you want the, the information on in terms of how much that costs, uh, we kick off on the 8th of Feb. There's an in-full payment, which is 2495 There's a payment plan option, which is 245 times 12. Um, and if you're interested, the next steps, what happens? You stop sharing. Uh, there's an application form here. We're not pushy or selling anything like that. We want to make sure it's right for you. So we have a two-step process. The first step is you have a little chat with me. You click on the application form, put in your details. I'll give you a ring for 10 minutes. And then you go and meet one of our trainers, Nick and Paul, um, who've trained Daisy, they're ICF coaches. They'll be the people that are delivering the training alongside me. See if you vibe with them. If you vibe with them, cool. We'll send you the link and that's it. Okay, so it's a two-step thing. We want to make sure we get the right people. Also, Nicola, your heart with is, is very similar to what a student drew at school in Portugal, which I really love. So there's obviously something in there. <laughs> that should be the logo for Heart With Is, I think. Thank you for sharing. All right. What discount for our members? Oh, what did you just say there? Say again louder. Do we have a discount for QT members? <laughs> yes. Yes. Five discounts on the call. I don't know what that'll be, but yes, of course, there'll be something uh, for you guys. Don't ask, don't get one, man. Nicely done. Yeah. You're looking for a job. <laughs> Do you want to come yeah, work? She's got one back on. <laughs> <laughs> she works for tutors. Um, um, Q&A, Q&A. No, we've just got one more thing. Last little thing Ooh. before we do that. Ooh. So my favorite quote, one of, one of my favorite quotes, said a lot of quotes, is this guy. The happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. Right? But so many times, still guilty of this, I'll think one thing. I'll say something else and I'll do something totally different. A little show of hands online who's guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, amazing. One way to transcend mental health, coaching, comfort, well, no, mental health and confidence is to start sticking to your word. All right. So thinking, saying, and doing all in alignment. When we do that, we're putting in little, it's like taking a vote into a vote box of self-trust. And I want to know from you. Don't worry about the accountability. I'd love for you to write down in your notes and then share into the chat the awareness, right? When we coach people, we call the four, we use the four A's. We're doing the three A's today, maybe just the two A's. I want to know what have you discovered today? What has been that insight? I don't care about the information. Well, I do. But what's the insight that you've that's landed for you personally? And I want you to write down an action step. You've wasted 60 minutes of your life if you do not do anything with this. I literally, this has been pointless. Start thinking about the action. Is there someone you really want to listen to become a heart with ears with? Is there someone you want to really, a student, you want to really develop your silence? Is there something you've taken away personally in this? You're like, wow, maybe I want to go and do this or explore this. Okay, so everyone, we've got 18 people still on the call, 17 including me. We need a share from everyone. Are you either an awareness or an action? And we'll do a Q&A as we do this as well, Julie, if you want. Um, let's plan the Q&A for another time, Sam, because we always finish on time. Punctuality is at both ends of the session. Okay, well, let's get everyone sharing in the chat then. Share Until one thing then, into the you. chat. What's been your insight? What's been your action step? The entry requirement is vibes. Yes, Julia, yeah. Good vibes only. <laughs> the points of just listening. Thank you, Risa. You silence. Cheers, yeah, D. Yeah, silence. Yeah, the silence one really blew the teachers away yeah. last week that I trained. Yeah. Um, we did a mock coaching session where they basically couldn't talk. <laughs> or the coach the coach couldn't talk. And the, the direction that it can go off in 
tangent can be huge. Not jumping in, action, refresh my coaching skills and tutor. Nice, Chris. To fur. Uh, asking my students what can I learn? <laughs> yeah, don't be Sam's mum. That's not okay, Sam. <laughs> no, she's an amazing woman, inspirational Very woman, good. but just would love her to listen, just not give me her advice. <laughs> uh discovered that i'm not the only one who hates when people try to solve my problems in five minutes yes George, georgina been in the ECA coaching form thank you look into coaching put the form here the form's here again team different levels of coaching incorporate coaching into tutoring yeah nice um the next course is kicking off on the 8th of feb at 6 30 like i said if you fill in the application form i can maybe give you a ring today and we can set up the the call with paul and nick um want to make sure it's right for you and I think that is about it. Oh, if you want to connect with me. Yes. Where do you find me? Uh, I haven't actually got a slide for this, but I'm really big on LinkedIn. So obviously I'm just going to type my name into the chat, but you know my name anyway, it's Sam Moyne. Uh, that's LinkedIn. The Instagram is Student Breakthrough. The Facebook is Student Breakthrough. Uh, we've got a YouTube, which is Student Breakthrough. And my email, my personal email is this. Breakthrough.com. It's Sam at studentbreakthrough.com. Oh, cheers, Helen. Um, last thing I want to share. And this hopefully should fire us all up for the rest of our weeks. Is that it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken adults. I repeat it. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken adults. Never, never, never discourage yourself what you're doing with young people because you guys are changing lives and you might not even realize it right now. We don't even know the impact we're making, okay? But just thank you so much for the ripple effects you're creating by tutoring. And thank you so much to Julia and QT. Daisy, thank you for sharing. Um, and so much gratitude and love for you all. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Sam, that gratitude and love goes right back to you. That was a really high value session. And I think you've left us all with overflowing hearts right now, which may well have little ears on them. Thank you. I'm closing this meeting on time. Love you all. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Dee. Thanks, Anita. Thanks, Daisy. Thanks, Georgina. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Adiva. Thanks, Risha. Thanks, Claire. Who did I miss? Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, tuition time. Next time, Adam. Thank you. Bye. Bye.